coming in. Milk drunk babies coming in hot. We're waiting on baby number two to be delivered. All right, girls, let's tell everyone how you were born. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I figured before I told the story of how these two babies came into the world, I'd show them to you. I feel like I haven't sat down and filmed in so long because these little babes have been keeping us very busy, but I really want to talk about the birth of Sienna and Ren because I put up a video that showed kind of like a highlight reel of our first five days with them or a week with them. I definitely think that video was so special but it didn't talk about or show the reality of that situation and so I want to talk about it. I think I'm ready now. Okay nap time and then we will be back. <laughs> girls are down just had a quick snack which if you're a mom especially a mom of twins it's the only kind of snack that you have I made a cup of coffee and we'll see how this goes i have the babies on the monitor so you may hear some crazy baby dinosaur sounds okay so to get into the topic of this video which is the birth of our daughters the birth of our twins i honestly feel so anxious to sit down and film this and talk about that experience because I truly feel like it changed my life which I'm sure every mother can say that the birth of their first child or children makes them feel like a, a brand new person I think it's very normal I did deliver Sienna and Ren via c-section it was a planned c-section again if you haven't seen other videos of mine I had a high-risk mono dye twin pregnancy which just meant a lot of things. Please watch previous videos of mine. I documented a lot of that experience. And because of that, I knew I was gonna be delivering um, via C-section. And so I delivered at 34 weeks and three days. And I knew that our girls would require time at the NICU. I knew that my birth experience was not going to be, you know, your ideal vaginal delivery, skin to skin right after, nurturing, bonding, like I knew that wasn't going to happen. However, I still don't think you can ever really prepare um, for what I experienced anyway. So let's just get into it because I'm a little anxious to even like look back at my journaled notes that I took those first five days because I haven't looked at them in a while. So our daughters were born on Monday, June 6th at 10.21 and 10.22 a.m. We woke up we had he had some breakfast i could not eat <laughs> not that i had any appetite anyway and we drove into the city and nothing super notable there my father calls me on the way in it was really wonderful to talk with him right before i gave birth jonathan played the beatles for me on the way in that's kind of been the music that has calmed me through pregnancy and now through the postpartum the beatles just i don't know they make me feel so so good and it's definitely going to be a part of pregnancy that I look back on fondly is listening to like uplifting music especially the Beatles. So I get to the hospital and we were met with the most incredible nurses that I've ever met in my whole life. Like just the labor and delivery floor was full of nurses that were so nurturing and helpful and made me feel so prepared for each phase of my delivery. And so I arrived, I checked in, we had a nurse, her name is Debbie. I actually fell in love with her and she was such an important part of my delivery process. But checked in, um, go to the kind of like pre-op space. So in that room, we had so many people come in and like check on us and walk us through the C-section process, which I thought was really cool. I will say that sometimes ignorance is bliss and <laughs> you don't get to be ignorant in a C-section. Like they... And when I say they, I mean the different doctors. So we had like the anesthesiologist come in, the doctor conducting the C-section, NICU doctors that were going to be taking care of our babies once they were born. Like everyone came in and checked on us before delivery and told us what was going to happen. And that's great if you're someone that likes to just be over communicated to but for me oh my gosh like I remember the anesthesiologist came in and walked me through exactly how I was going to feel from the point of the spinal talked me through like what that was going to feel like what that was going to be like everything from how the numbing process works just like so much information that I actually felt like it it didn't give me peace of mind it made me more anxious so just an FYI that was my experience but then like the doctor came in that was conducting the c-section and did um, an ultrasound or sonogram on my belly to see the position the babies were in and it was funny because she was joking like oh They're breech. I'm gonna be grabbing feet today. I was like 
my babies were breached the whole time I knew that would be the case but it was just a weird thing to hear so anyways as much as the information was a lot to take in it was so nice to have so much support and people coming in to check on me before I was going to be giving birth especially because my pregnancy was so high risk I was already so worried about what this delivery would look like it was nice to have a little bit of an understanding of what to expect then again back to the nurses like they are your everything through this experience the people that you lean on like this nurse debbie was just so supportive of jonathan and i made us so comfortable she was like it's gonna be great you're bringing your babies into the world like she was a calming presence for me so it does make a difference and if you are a nurse of any kind out there just thank you for all the incredible work that you do so yeah that was pretty much the experience jonathan and i definitely had some downtime to just like relax, enjoy each other, soak up the final moments, just Tim and I, and I got some baby kicks in my belly in that room, and I'll never forget it. Um, and that was kind of the, the experience up until it was time to go into the delivery room. I will say that that is a very surreal experience, and I think, again, with it being a C-section, and now I knew exactly what to expect, I took an approach and I don't know if I would recommend this um, but I completely like detached my mind from my body. I literally took myself and floated above my body and just like detached from the experience because I don't really know why. I don't know why I did this. They said okay we're ready for you and they put me on a little stretcher and rolled me out and Jonathan had to wait, put on his little dad suit um and wait in the room and so they brought me into this extremely sterile cold surgery room operating room i had heard from so many people that it was something that you should mentally prepare for because it's not like a calming room it's not like a birthing center if you get a vaginal natural delivery like it's very sterile very cold equipment everywhere it has a smell to it so i think because i knew all of that i just again tried to just disassociate my body from what i was going through and just focus on like you are bringing your babies into this world that is so exciting and beautiful and amazing and calming focus on that so i just remember rolling in and just being in like a daze they took me and like plopped me onto the um bed or maybe i got on the bed myself because i wasn't numb yet i can't really remember You're gonna wake up your sister with that. Okay, so I think this is just what has to happen because pretty much all day, every day, I am either on the pump or the babies are on me. So, okay. I'll hold it up like this. You don't have to just stare at me breasting the whole time. Where was I? I think I was about to get the spinal and that nurse Debbie I was talking about was so amazing and she let me hold her hand because they don't let you bring your partner in with you when you're getting the epidural. I think it's just such a big part of the procedure that things can, I don't know, you don't want to be distracted. So they don't let your partners come in. But um, I had my nurse, which was great. And something that's so crazy is when they give you the spinal, they ask you to like explain what you're feeling to make sure it's working, which I thought was crazy. I'm like, you're relying on me. I, again, have disassociated myself from my body. I don't know if I can accurately tell you what I'm feeling. But he's like, okay, do you feel the numbness on like the left side of your back, the right side of your back? Do you feel a lot of pressure here? And I was like, oh my God, I was not prepared to like have to be aware of what my body was experiencing. And he had walked me through beforehand that you'll start to feel numbness and tingling in your toes and then it'll go numb completely and it'll work its way up your body, which is so insane. Like once you start to feel the numbness in your toes, they put you onto the table and they just continue to ask you like, okay, can you feel like your thighs right now? And they'll start putting pressure on your thighs and if you can't feel it, then it's working. And it's just so crazy. I will say one thing that I wasn't aware of beforehand that I found really crazy is that you go numb up to like your nipples basically and so that means that you can't really feel yourself breathing which is a huge reason again why i was like i am disassociating from my body i know i keep saying that but it really was what i had to do i remember the anesthesiologist telling me that you know a lot of people have no problem with um being numb getting the spinal but they freak out when they realize that they can't feel themselves breathing anymore. And I was like, what does that even mean? And during the procedure, like I knew what it meant. And it's like, you go to take a breath and you don't feel your ribs moving, which sounds so strange, but it's a very claustrophobic feeling. And 
I just remember looking up at him and being like, am I okay? Am I breathing? He was like, you're completely fine. This is what I warned you about. Everybody experiences it. Just don't think about it. So again, I was like, okay, going back to my floated bubble above my body because this is weird. For me, once I was like laying down, I just put my arms out. I don't even remember them putting my arms out. Jonathan told me that they did and I just laid there. And I remember just like closing my eyes and just hearing and seeing all the lights and just not moving or talking. Like I remember the nurses I had like come over a few times like when are you okay like are you good you're not really talking anymore like i was really chatty beforehand but i was like no i'm fine i'm just i'm just being here like just let me be and so they got everything ready and it's such a process to like prep for a c-section and like get um everything ready and sterilized what okay well we have one baby right here and your sister is gonna stay on the monitor in the other room there is not enough coffee in the world for twins, I swear. Anyways, I'm laying there, arms on the sides, and they were just like getting started. And something that's cool too is Beth Israel is a teaching hospital, and so I just kept feeling like I was in Grey's Anatomy. Like there were so many people um, in the room, and there were a lot of students and people that are learning, and I was like, okay, for the sake of medicine, like sure. However, I did not love that because of that, the doctors had to like walk through everything that was happening so i was hearing things like okay start the incision now that's the ovaries don't cut that like little things like that i just remember being like holy crap i don't want to hear this right now <laughs> something that's really funny too is that i remember laying there and again hearing that they were like about to get started and thinking like where's jonathan <laughs> And to be honest, they like forgot to get him like it's an actual thing because I heard all of a sudden like wait Where's dad someone called dad? And so Jonathan was brought in like after I was already kind of like halfway Cut open. Sorry for lack of better words Then he came in and he said I was just laid out on the table Like I don't really remember much until I like heard his voice and I kind of was like, okay like, This is really happening. I have Jonathan now like I'm good He just kept telling me how strong I was that I am about to bring our daughters into, into the world How proud of me he was how much he loved me Like I just remember him saying all of these things and it just helped it helped bring me back to the moment It's very quick c-sections are about an hour long and the babies are out in the first 10-15 minutes and then afterwards it's them like stitching you back up and so very quickly um the anesthesiologist said okay like the babies are coming are you ready and I just remember um thinking okay like the babies are coming and they're going to go right with the NICU team like that's what we were told like they are um you know high risk babies and they need a lot of help right away you won't really be able to see them maybe we'll give you a peek and so I just remember hearing Sienna be born and she was crying and I just remember looking at Jonathan and we both were like I think we both just had a moment of understanding like they're okay these babies are okay we were just crying and so unbelievably shocked that we could hear her crying and that she was real and she was here we didn't expect her to be crying we expected her to have so many medical needs and go right into the incubator and um it was just such a blessing that we got to hear her enter the world and then a few seconds later ren was born and she was crying and the doctor just kept saying you know they're doing so well like they are crying they're breathing on their own they didn't need oxygen right away like they definitely had a lot of things that they needed to work on in the NICU but breathing was not one of them that was just the biggest blessing and they brought them over to us and again if you saw my um, birth video you saw us get to see them for the first time and it was the best moment of my entire life and I'll look back on that moment of my life constantly and just be so grateful that my body was able to create these two beautiful beautiful babies and that they were born okay and that I felt like I did a good job <laughs> and I was just proud of myself I was proud of them I was the happiest I think I've ever been in my entire life. Someone doesn't want mom to film. Excuse me. This is Renberg, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I'm trying to tell the story about when you were born, mama. <laughs> I also didn't mention that Jonathan is out running errands, so. <laughs> I'm just, this is going to take four hours to film. Just the best moment of my entire life. Being able to see these babies that I had spent nine months creating 
and to be able to touch them, love them, kiss them for even just those few moments that we had right after they were born was something we didn't think we were going to get. So I felt like I could take a breath after a really crazy pregnancy and it was kind of a calm moment before all that was to come in the next few weeks. <laughs> It was just kind of a still moment that I look back on with the biggest smile. She does not want to sleep, so. Roger Banks, you just want to say hello to everybody? She will not sleep. She will not sleep, huh, mama? It's honestly comical at this point. I'm so sorry if you're like annoyed at how many times I pause, <laughs> but my reality so Jonathan was able to cut the umbilical cord um, while the babies were still in the room with us which was so so unexpected they told us that he was not going to be able to do that like our doctor was like no absolutely not um, so it was just so special that he was able to it meant so much to him and so then they needed to go to the NICU floor so Jonathan went right with them it was something we talked about beforehand if you have a baby that needs to go to the NICU the father usually has to make the choice of staying with mom or babies and it was not even a question Jonathan was going with the babies no matter what that was something that was really important to me and so he went down with the babies and they took like 45 minutes, stitched me up, brought me back to the recovery room. So then in the recovery room, this is where you recover. And so I was back with nurse Debbie and, you know, had a ton of nurses and people coming in to check on me, make sure that like my body was adjusting to the spinal and everything like how it was supposed to. And so they just came in, kept asking questions. They had to check my bleeding, make sure the incision was okay, my vaginal bleeding. Uh, because even though you don't birth through your vagina, you still have bleeding and everything and you just need to make sure that there's nothing crazy or dangerous happening. For me, I just kept asking, you know, what do I need to do to get downstairs to my babies on the NICU floor and what do I need to do to be able to like breastfeed because that was so important to me. I wanted to start pumping right away because I didn't have the luxury of being able to put the babies on me. So I wanted to do the work myself. And so my nurse was incredible and kind of walked me through all the steps. She was like, once we do four um, bleeding checks and make sure that you're okay, you can start breasting. I was like, every 15 minutes, let's get checked, let's get checked. And so in one hour, I was fully checked and good to go to start pumping. And so I did a hand express pump to get all the colostrum out and I had a ton of colostrum, which was so awesome. I wasn't expecting to have so much because I gave birth at 34 weeks. I kind of thought my body was not going to have any milk for a long time, but that's not the case. So if you're in that situation, just know that your body will do what it's supposed to. It just might take some work. Like I was really hand expressing and using the pump with the nurse. I had enough colostrum that Jonathan brought that um, milk or colostrum to the babies and even in the NICU, they rubbed, you know, the colostrum on their lips and their noses. They were on feeding tubes and um, IV fluids, so they couldn't, like, ingest anything in their mouth. But just having the breast milk, like, on their nose, on their mouth um, is so, so important and something that you should really push for if your hospital does not want you to do that for whatever reason. I just know that at 2 o'clock, I was able to be wheeled to the NICU. I don't know what the reason was that it was, like, three hours later that I had to wait to go to the NICU, but... For whatever reason, they had to just make sure I was fully recovered to be able to go to see the babies. And so um, a lot of that is in that other video. The first time that I was wheeled in to see them, I was able to touch them, hold them, put them on me. And then I had to go back to my recovery room to again get checked on and everything just because a C-section is a major surgery, major abdominal surgery, and you need a lot of observation. So you can't stay with your baby for very long that first day because you have a lot of um, needs. And that was something that I had to really accept and know that, okay, I need to take care of myself before I can take care of them. Like, let's get all of that done. So that leads me to the next step of recovery, which is walking. And they recommend not walking for 24 hours after a C-section, but I pushed to be walking in 12 hours. And I'm actually happy that I pushed myself in general with my recovery. It was very successful, um, mainly because I didn't let myself think about my recovery I was just so focused on making sure the girls were okay I don't know if that's a great way to approach it but it worked for me because I didn't even really think about myself or this big incision in my belly I was like what can I do to get to my babies I had some chicken fingers and french fries and just kind of waited around for different nurses to check in on me I think for me because I had babies in the NICU that all I cared about was seeing them that I didn't really have time to focus on my own recovery which worked out because it was a pretty seamless 
recovery overall. So I was able to go back and see the girls, spend some time with them, pumped in the room with them, snuggled them a little bit more. They needed to really stay in their incubators a lot. So it was a lot of just like holding their hands through the holes in the incubator and just like telling them how much we love them. And then I had to go back to my recovery room for the night. So then later that night, it was 10 p.m., which was 12 hours post-surgery. And something else that happens with the C-section is that you have a catheter put in. And so I wanted that thing out. I did not like having a catheter put in. And so Anna was kind of nervous about them removing it because when they put it in, I was numb, but removing it, I would not be numb. <laughs> and so I just wanted it out. They removed it and then they told me, okay, you need to prove that you can pee on your own, you know, within the next four hours. And so they put this like measuring bucket in the toilet and said, okay, when you have to pee, like you need to go in here. And so it was like 2 a.m. and I tried to pee and I couldn't. And it felt like I had a UTI, if you know what that's like. It's not fun. It's like you need to pee and you can't do it. And I just didn't know this was such a thing with a catheter. And the nurse was like, if you don't prove that you can pee, you have to put the catheter back in. And I did not want that because I already like felt so uncomfortable from the catheter. And so they gave me like peppermint to sniff on the toilet and a straw to blow through. And that supposedly helps you pee and it did. Eventually, not at this point, but like three hours later, I was able to pee and convince the nurse not to put the catheter back in. So that was just something that I did not think was very fun. So then that was pretty much the day of their birth. It was wonderful. It was so strange to have two daughters that I couldn't like sleep in the same room as um but they had needs that only the NICU nurses could fulfill and so that was the day of their birth and it was beautiful and ups and downs and I didn't get to fully focus on them because I had a lot of recovering to do but I think the next day and so on was really about just understanding where they are at and what they need to do to get out of the NICU. I swear the rest of this won't be as long-winded as day one, but day one was just, I mean, the day I brought babies into the world. There's a lot to say. The only thing I missed was that I slept really comfortably that night. I did sleep for like four and a half hours. You're supposed to pump every three hours, but the nurses recommended that for surgery recovery, I should try to give myself four to five hours of sleep at night and then pump right when I got up at like four in the morning. So I slept really comfortably because the meds from the spinal last for 24 hours. So I was good. I woke up the next morning. I was fine. And then eventually I was not so fine. So day two, Tuesday, June 7th, I took my first shower post delivery and it was life changing. It was so amazing. You can shower with an incision, you're all bandaged up and um, it doesn't hurt really. I think again, I was still feeling the <laughs> effects of the spinal. So I wasn't really in pain. Continued pumping every three hours. Um, had so many nurses coming in constantly to check me and they were on like a schedule. So they would say like, oh, okay, next nurse will be here in like 45 minutes. You need to be in the room. And I was like, how am I gonna be in this room if I like, I wanna go see my daughters. So it was, it was really stressful and I just could have cared less about getting checked on myself even though the nurses were so wonderful. And the pain really started to kick in like right at the 24 hour mark. So like 10 or 11 a.m. this day, the pain was so bad. And again, when I would go up and see the girls, like I couldn't even feel the pain. I just didn't want to focus on my recovery at all. I just wanted to be with them because all was good when I was with them. But it was pretty painful. So they give you like Tylenol extra strength every like four hours and they do offer you Oxy. I did not want to do that. I kept putting off getting the Oxy because I just wanted to like feel this pain and then get used to it instead of like putting a band-aid over it, um, which is completely up to you and your decision and recovery, but that's what I wanted to do. So I didn't take Oxy that day. This day, Jonathan was able to do skin to skin with the babies, which was so special, so wonderful. Um, I know it meant a lot to him and it meant a lot to me to see that for the first time, him really getting to hold them. So that was really wonderful. Um, and just lots of like snuggles that day and the girls were doing really well. They both were put on feeding tubes, which was really hard to see, but it was good because 
um, they were off the IV fluid, they were now able to take in food. So they were putting in my breast milk and um, added formula to their feeding tube so that they could start really growing. They did start losing weight on this day, which is really normal. Most babies lose weight the first week of life. So we did notice that their weight was going down a bit and it continued to go down for like four to five days before it did eventually go back up. They're doing wonderful now. Okay, so then day three, I woke up and I was in so much pain, like so much pain and the meds definitely wore off and I was just <laughs> feeling it like okay I just went through a major abdominal surgery I should probably start giving myself some grace and like taking it easy because I was at this point choosing to walk to go see the girls and it's a big hospital like it wasn't just like right next door and so I dialed back had Jonathan put me in a wheelchair like I was just kind of like okay I need to take a minute and really recover because this could be bad if I continue down this path so Pain was bad, recovery was not going super great, but whatever. And then this day was where I feel like we really started to understand medically what is going on with them. What are their needs? What is not really working well with them right now? Why are they in the NICU? Like all of that. And so we did get to understand um, them a little bit more this day. I think they give parents a day or two to kind of adjust to being parents and mom to recover from c-section or delivery and then now it's like okay this is how you care for your baby so they started telling us about care times and started telling us how we can you know take care of our children we were able to change their diapers in the incubators take their temperatures soothe them in certain ways we could touch them while they were in these um, glass boxes and so that was nice to really start feeling like their parents you know when babies are in the NICU the first few days the nurses take over you don't really get to care for them which is really difficult the babies were really spitty they still are really spitty meaning they don't handle food always very well and they have a lot of acid reflux and so they do spit up a lot so we started realizing that and knowing how we could um, help prevent certain spits or what to do when they were really spitty like we just started learning about our babies and what to do to help them the biggest hurdle I suppose that our daughters had and that they needed to eventually get over was what's called spells or episodes if you've been in a NICU you've heard of this before and it's essentially where the babies just stop breathing or they take long pauses in breathing and their heart stops for certain periods of time um, it's very common with premature babies but there's nothing in the world that can prepare you for seeing that for the first time and so on this day day three was where I saw my first spell I'll never forget it. I absolutely broke down. Essentially, when they have these spells, the nurses come in and they essentially like resuscitate the baby and they get the baby to breathe again or get the baby's heart to start beating again. And it is the worst feeling in the entire world to be to see something like this and not know how to help um, because I had no idea what to do. And luckily, I was in a situation where nurses were there and they could handle it. And so from that point on the babies had a lot of spells they still do spell actually and um we now know what to do when they spell and how to prevent it so that was just you know day three was really hard and difficult mainly because of that um and the fact that my hormones i started to have what's called the hormone drop all the nurses told me about it it happens usually three to five days after delivery and I was warned about it and I still could have done nothing to prepare for how emotional I would feel from that day through like a week after delivery. It's just insane. Like your body just is so sad and emotional and I just cried and when I saw the first spell I just cried and it was such a traumatic day to be quite honest. Um, I'll never forget day three. That being said though, at the end of day three, I was able to do my first social nursing session with the girls, which with preemie babies and maybe with any newborns, kind of the first phase of breastfeeding, like breast to baby, not just me pumping all the time, is putting them on you and just having them like, just graze your chest. You know, they lick, they suck, they do different things that are just like natural for them that they just innately know how to do. And it just allows them to get comfortable with your body. With preemie babies, they definitely won't latch right away and they won't have a successful breasting session for a while, but they just, it allows them to get comfortable with you, you to get comfortable with them. And so we had our first social nursing session that night and I just remember sitting down in the chair after that stressful day and having them on me and it just kind of made everything feel okay. And I needed that on that day. And then day four, so 
Day four still felt extremely hormonal, was extremely sad, had baby blues full on. Um, my milk really started coming in on day four, just a little bit more than colostrum. Like I had that transitional milk and my night sweats kicked in. I still have them. They are crazy. <laughs> when I have my period, I get like night sweats and hot flashes, but postpartum night sweats, especially when you're breastfeeding, are just next level. Like I wake up drenched even from like an hour nap. And so that started on day four and has continued through now. On day four, my pain was still really bad. I did choose to take an Oxy on day four um, and it worked really well, but it totally like wiped me out. Like the Oxy dose they give you is so small and tiny. The nurses are like, you'll be fine. Don't worry about like feeling like you'll be in a daze. Nope, I still felt like I was in a daze. I can't do <laughs> drugs, like I just can't. And that's why I didn't wanna do it, but it did take the pain away. So it was a nice reprieve, but I hated how I felt. I tried to give myself grace on this day through my postpartum depression I was starting to feel just from the baby blues and the hormone dip. I remember it was a super rainy day and Jonathan and I just kind of like sat in my recovery room for an hour or two and we put the TV on and just tried to like take a minute and take a break from like everything and let me feel all my feelings and I recommend doing that um, if you're in this situation because again like you can't be there for your baby if you're not there for yourself the babies had jaundice on this day so they had to go under the phototherapy lights something that is very common with babies that are full term preterm it's very normal um and what stinks is that when they're under the phototherapy lights you can't really like visit with them or touch them or anything because they need to be under these lights in their incubators so that was also why we took some time down in the room to just relax and recover while they were under the um, therapy lights. And then just social nursing continued this day. Both babies were getting better. They were getting stronger. Things were just like looking really good. And again, they were still on room air. Like they didn't need oxygen. Their spells still continued, but they were having less spells while they were sleeping. Um, mainly their spells and episodes where, you know, their heart would stop or they would pause their breathing was happening when they were feeding. So that's something that can be worked through. Sleeping spells are a little bit harder to detect when babies aren't on monitor. So that's why if your baby has sleeping spells consistently in a NICU, they'll need to stay in the NICU longer because you need to be attached to a monitor to really see when a baby's having a sleeping spell as opposed to a feeding spell, you can kind of detect when they're having that. Then day five is the last day that I'm going to talk about in this video because this was the day that I was discharged from the hospital. So when you um, deliver via C-section, you usually have to stay in the hospital three to five days. So I was there five days and um, I wrote that my pain was much better on this day. I didn't need anything beyond Advil and Motrin. Something that was really unexpected that happened that day is that the girls were transferred out of the Boston Beth Israel NICU and up to a a NICU at a hospital closer to us in the North Shore Boston area and this was such a gift that we were not expecting. I was discharged and we went and sat downstairs at the hospital for lunch and the hospital called me and said hey like there are beds open at a NICU closer to your home it'll be easier for you to visit them because I was being discharged I was gonna have to come into Boston every day and they said we can bring them to this NICU and it was like a whirlwind they were like okay we're gonna transfer them in 45 minutes via ambulance like come up and um, let's essentially do this and so I didn't have much time to process Jonathan and I kind of scrambled went back upstairs and the like ambulance drivers the paramedics were there ready to take the babies and this was something that you can't really prepare yourself for none of this you can really prepare yourself for but the way they transfer the babies in this like box thing that is just so scary looking was really hard i completely broke down and just started sobbing in front of the paramedics and they were like it's gonna be okay i had like 30 minutes with the girls to you know give them a kiss say i love you i'll see you you know at your destination closer to home and they put them in these little boxes to be transported and what was horrible was that i was obviously like okay i'm gonna be going in the ambulance with them there's no way my daughters are gonna be traveling for the first time without me let alone in an ambulance and the nurses were like absolutely not you just had a c-section a bumpy ambulance ride is not something we can allow you to do and i guess they don't allow moms to do that so we drove behind them the entire time and 
watching your babies in an ambulance, driving out of Boston traffic all the way up to the North Shore is not something that any <laughs> new mom should ever have to do or dad. They arrived at their destination safe and sound and it was really stressful, but it was so worth it to have them closer to home. So let me see if I forgot anything. So the last thing that I just wrote was that that day five was the hardest day of my life. On that day five, we had to leave the hospital and go home and that was the hardest thing i've ever had to do in my entire life and leaving that hospital um even when jonathan tells the story he's like i've never seen you cry like that in my life <laughs> and we've been together a long time i just felt a pain like that i've never felt before it was crippling and i just felt so helpless and i felt like i'm their mother like why am i not the one taking care of them why am i driving away from them um, there's nothing that can prepare you for that and that was the first five days <laughs> of um, of their life and it was something that I'll never forget it's something I'm so grateful for but it was an insane experience to say the least perfect timing because Sienna is now waking up <laughs> so I am going to turn the camera off and just say thank you so much for watching this video if it's your first time here welcome if you've been part of this journey for so long I hope that this video allowed you a window into my life that you're looking for to hear how this experience has gone for me I will share more I'm going to share what the season of life looks like for <laughs> us when i'm a little bit more ready as you can see right now we're just a little chaotic over here and we're trying to find our groove and it takes time especially when there's two thank you for sending so much love and kindness the comments and everything have been so special to me i love meeting other moms on this platform dads or just any of you that choose to just send over some love it's meant the world to me and a lot of you have followed me on instagram and you've been able to see more updates in real time and a lot of you have messaged me there and it's just been really wonderful i am just so grateful for all of you that are here so thank you so much please subscribe or hit the like button or do both if you enjoyed this video and i will see you all in my next one